Hello, second grade. So I will be teaching phonics this week. And um, in preparation for phonics, you should pull out a scrap piece of paper and a pencil. You're also going to need to have page um, 279 for later. But right now, you need a scrap piece of paper. It can be number paper, any piece of paper. You're just going to write a few stuff on it right here at the beginning. So. I will give you a second to be able to pause and get those things together. And so we're going to have, what we're going to do is I'm going to read a word. I'm going to read three different words. I'll take my time and read three different words. You're going to number on your paper one to three. And each word that I say to you, you're going to tell me or write out the special sounds in the word. So say, for example, if I said the word treasure, you would tell me um, in the word treasure, wait, there it is, treasure. Treasure has her and train, E-R, and the mark over. You would write down the special sound, T-R. Treasure has a and Lee, E-A. You would write down the special sound, E-A. And then it also has... Treasure, it has one more special sound. Your, U R E. Just like that on your piece of paper. If I said the word treasure, that's what you would write. So that was just an example. Um, hopefully, you understood what I am looking for. I will give you the first word. The first word is strawberry. I'm not a big fan of strawberries. I don't really like strawberries. I like strawberry flavored stuff, but I don't really like strawberries. So, strawberry. Take a second, pause, and think what special sounds are in strawberry. Strawberry. Gives you a hint of four special sounds in strawberry. Number two. The next word is author. Author. If you need to go back, rewind, and listen to me say it again, um, no worries. When we're done, I'll, I will go through the special sounds again together. So, author. And then number three is the word script. Scripture. This is not something you're going to be graded on. It's just get your mind um, working or thinking about phonics as we get ready to start our phonics lesson. Once again, that last word was scripture. All right, and hopefully you have finished writing out those special sounds. Um, we're going to go through those together. <coughs> you can check yourself to make sure you got them all right. The first one was strawberry. And the word strawberry said they had four special sounds. The first special sound in the word strawberry is skirt and string, S-C-R. Just like that, skirt and string, S-C-R. In the word strawberry, we also had ah and saw. A W. You would have written it just like that. Ah and saw. A W. Also had the sound air. E R R. And the last sound was e. Last on the end, strawberry. Strawberry. Four special sounds in the word strawberry. You can give yourself a round of applause or tap yourself on the shoulder if you got those all right. The next word was author. Author. We have ah. Faucet, A U, author, to thick, T H, and 
then er or author. Once again, you can give yourself a round of applause. Not if you did a class, round of applause. Or tap yourself on your shoulder if you got it all right. The last word was scripture. Scripture. It has two special sounds. We have stir and scream. S-C-R. We were written it just like that. And then you had ch, I mean chur, chore. T U R E. We have written it just like that. So once again, if you got those right, you give yourself a round of applause. Or tap on the shoulder if you got them all right. So then moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and read a group of words. And I want you to listen carefully. If you need to go back and remind, rewind and play it again, go ahead. But listen carefully and think as I'm reading these group of words, what, um, what are the similarities in the words? So have agreement, amusement, encouragement, government, judgment, and placement. I'll read them again. Agreement, amusement, encouragement, government, judgment, and placement. So, um, if you're listening very carefully, I'll go ahead and tell you what the similarities were since I can't ask you. Um, but it, the similarities, if you were paying attention, is meant at the end. Each of those words had the sound meant at the end. So for example, you hear agreement, bill, this is the common ending each of those words had. M-E-N-T, agreement, amusement, encouragement, government, judgment, and placement. I'm going to read another group of words and listen carefully. Once again, if you need to rewind, go ahead and rewind, listen carefully and think what similarities are in these words? They all have the same sound. It's not, it's a little bit tricky. It's trickier with these words because it's not in the end, it's kind of in the middle, in the middle of the words. Jericho, very, heritage, parish, Meredith. I'll read the words again. Jericho, very, heritage, Parish, Meredith. So, a little bit trickier, but the sound is in the uh, in the center of the words, and it's like it's air. I'll read them again. Jericho, read the air sound. Very, heritage, parish, Meredith, and um, it makes the sound air. But each of those words, and each of those words, the, sound, the letters that are making that sound is E-R. So like here's E-R, if I were to write Jericho around it, it would be capital J, which is the proper noun. Jericho. Do you see that? The sound in the middle of the word? Jericho. That's the similarities that were in those in those group of words. Um, once again, preparing you for our lesson today, the worksheet that you have in front of you. So next, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to read some sentences, and what you're going to do is you're going to think about it as I'm reading a sentence. I want, uh, obviously you can't tell me, but think, is it a sentence? Like, is it a complete sentence? Or is it just a group of words? So I want you to think and see if you can figure out whether or not it is a complete sentence or if it's just a group of words, if it's just a phrase. So the first one is one large octopus. So I'll give you a second to think about it. One large octopus. Is it a complete sentence or is it a group of words? Does it make sense? Like, 
Does it make sense? One large octopus, or is it just a group of words? Okay, so it is not a complete sentence because it doesn't make any sense. What about the large one large octopus? What is the one large octopus doing? We don't know anything about the one large octopus. It just says one large octopus. What about the one large octopus? If I were to complete it to make it a sentence, I could say one large octopus lives in the Atlantic Ocean, for example. And then that makes sense because now we know a little bit more about the one large octopus. What about it? It lives in the Atlantic Ocean. It's a complete sentence. It makes a complete thought. The next one I'm going to read is he needs to buy new shoes. He needs to buy new shoes. So think about it. Does it make complete sense? Is it a complete sentence? Or is it just a group of words? He needs to buy new shoes. It's a complete sentence because it makes sense. We have a subject and a verb. He is a subject and um, needs is the verb. So he needs to buy new shoes. We have everything we need to know about it. What about he? He needs to buy new shoes. So that makes complete sense and it is a, it makes sense and it's a complete sentence. So go ahead and pull out, you can put away the piece of paper that we're working on and you can go ahead and pull out your um, worksheet. Page number 279, it should look just like this. Don't worry, we're gonna, um, I'm going to work on the first part with you so that um, you can understand exactly what's going to be going on there. So it's a word web, and, and kind of basically like what we did at the beginning when I asked you, uh, I gave you a group of words, and I asked you to tell me what the special sound was, or also after that I read a group of words, and I asked you to think about the similarities we're just preparing you for what we are doing or what we're going to do in the word in the on the worksheet. So whisper is at the center of the word web. We'll just look on the first one. Whisper is at the center of the word web. So the first one on the left. So we're doing the here. Have your math your worksheet like this. Here's whisper. So we're gonna be doing this one right here where it says add ed the suffix ed that's what we're going to be doing right there the first one so we're going to work like this we're going to do the first top ones and then we're going to do the two bottom ones the first one is orange it's an orange circle so it says add ed to the word whisper which is that's easy all you have to do is take the word whisper write it in the blank and add ed and you have your word whispered. That's all you have to do for that one. Just write the word whisper in the blank and add ed to the word and you have whispered. So going across from that, still on the top, the purple one, the purple um, bubble, it says antonym. So what's an antonym again? Remember an antonym is the opposite, it means opposite. So what's the opposite of whisper then? Just whispering, what's the opposite of whispering? What did you say to spin your back? If you know what the opposite of whispering is, then go ahead and do it now. The opposite of whispering is yelling. That's the opposite of whisper, yelling. So you're just gonna write the word yell in the purple bubble. The opposite of whisper is yell. And then on the bottom one, on the left, the green bubble, it says one special sound, so remember, that's my beginning of the lesson. I asked you to tell me the special sounds in the words. Here it says one special sound. And if I say the word whisper, whisper. Um, one special sound I hear in there. There, there are two different special sounds. You can take your pick. All I asked you is for one. Whisper. It has w in whale. And it has er in verse. You can take your pick of one of those two and just put it in the blank. And then the last one, the um, red bubble, it says add ing. That's easy too. All you have to do is take the word whisper, write it in the blank, and then add ing to it so it becomes whispering. So um, if you need to remind, rewind and go back to be able to fill in these blanks, that's fine. We're going to go ahead to the bottom of the page 
The second half, you're going to do your stuff for the word flower. You're going to do it by yourself. Um, when, when After you have finished watching this video, you're going to go ahead and do that last part by yourself. We're going to go to the bottom of the page and do dictation. So, once again, if you didn't hear me say something, you can go ahead and rewind. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the sentence. Don't cry over spilled milk. Take your time. Um, use appropriate appropriate uh, punctuation and capitalization. Remember, it's a sentence. Don't cry over spilled milk. If you need to go ahead and pause the video while you finish writing that, that's fine. Um, real quick, before um, we end our time for today, we're going to take a look at this last sentence right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, Abraham, Ruth, and David are some of my favorite Bible characters. Um, not really. This is not talking about me. They're not my favorite Bible characters. Ruth is one of my favorite Bible characters, obviously. I know David is my one of my brother's favorite Bible characters. This is just a sentence I put on the board. So, Abraham, Ruth, and David are some of my favorite Bible characters. Um, this sentence needs commas, right? Because, let me get out of your way. It is listing three different Bible characters. Oh man, I skipped ahead of myself. But it's listing Bible characters in the sentence. And so the sentence needs commas. And I still have my sentence. The sentence needs commas. All right? So counting, I, already, I, I went ahead of myself, counting how many um, Bible characters got in the sentence. Abraham, one. Ruth, two. David. Three. And remember what we did in phonics class um, when I showed you a quick way to be able to do it. So I have three things in the sentence, three um, people that I'm talking about in the sentence. So in order to know how many commas I need to put in, I could go ahead and do, remember, it was one, two, I need to be able to face you like this. So it's like one, two, and you can't, you can't fit a comma in either. They're just going to fall down. Comma here, comma here. So it means you have two commas. But another tip that I also let you know is that anytime there's listing something and there's and right here, there will never be a comma after and. Never be a comma, a comma after and. So right here, comma, three. Comma after Abraham, comma after Ruth. You're essentially going to include two commas, but also, if you ever need to double check, Never pin a comma after in. This would be wrong. You don't need a comma after David because there's no comma after the word in. All right, so you can go ahead and finish the worksheet, the phonics worksheet, page 279. Do the word flower. Um, nothing difficult. Um, it's just going to ask you to put a picture. I think it's uh, asking you to draw a picture of a flower and then. Um, Opposite, it says antonym again. Sorry, my bad. Homonym. Homonym is a word that sounds the same. Homonym. On the bottom, it says rhyming word, a word that rhymes with flower. And that was the, um, that's a blue bubble. And then the green bubble says one special sound. There are three special sounds in flower, so take your pick. And that, that's it for today. If you, need, if you need anything to be sent over again, you can always go ahead and rewind the video. I hope you are um, all doing well back home. As for myself, I'm doing fantastic, and I can't wait to see you again in class.